Thanks everyone for uh, joining us today. Uh, just a quick slide about us. Uh, we are RPI consultants. Uh, we were founded uh, in Baltimore in 1999. That's where we are today. Uh, we are an M4 Alliance partner uh, and we have uh, consultants nationwide um, covering all different skill sets, not just supply chain, uh, finance, tech, uh, HR, uh, and we also have an imaging practice as well. So really uh, focusing on the need, uh, organizations are really looking for a way to better manage um, law and expiration dates within the Lawson system. Uh, specifically for laboratory products um, where you, know, you need to send these products to a, a, a lab uh, so they can quality control them uh, and then release them out to the organization. So really just having better controls in the system for that um, allowing for the collection of these lot numbers during the receipt and then having a way um, uh, to quality control uh, those through a receiving process. Um, so really the proposed solution is to utilize um, the lot tracking in Lawson, it's switching it to R for receipts, and then um, setting a, a flag in the item location file um, to require the inspection of this product. Um, and there's also some neat IPA flows that you can build. Um, so this is just the general overview. Just a high level overview. We're gonna get into some of the details in just a minute. Um, you know, once the PO, or the PO is uh, received on PO30, if that, that R or the lot tracking flag is set to R on IC11 or at the uh, location level, it's gonna prompt you to go right to um, PO39 where you're gonna enter that lot, uh, that lot number. And then once that's added, it's gonna bring you back to um, PO30 to release. And if you have that IC12 inspection required flag set to Y at the location level, um, there's a, a new process that, uh, well, it's not new, but uh, there's a process that takes place where the inspector actually has to go into PO34 uh, to accept or reject that inspection. But how does that inspector know that they have something to inspect? So there's some cool things that you could do with that as well that we're gonna talk about. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's kind of what it's talking through here. There's also the scenario where um, the inspector may actually reject um, that specific lot that they're inspecting. So the system will actually start a PO31 return uh, to kick off that process. All right, so the setup is pretty simple itself. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you do have open transactions or inventory does exist on these, these items where you're going to set lot tracking, uh, you're going to have to close out the open transactions and adjust inventory out um, and then update that lot tracking flag on IC11 and IC12 um, and then adjust inventory back in. So on IC11 it's just right there on the main screen and then uh, again same thing with IC12 it's right on the main tab as well in the lower right corner. Um, and that IC12 flag does override the IC11 um, flag as well. All right, and then it, uh, the inspection flag, you set that at the location level. So that's on, on IC12 and on the miscellaneous tab. And once that flag is set to Y, um, anytime there's a receipt on that, on that, trans, or on that item, it's going to uh, put these items into an, uh, a hold queue for... Um, for inspection. Until that inspection is released, um, you won't be able to allocate those, those items. So something to note is, um, you know, you need to have that IC12 record in order to require that inspection, in order to automate right. that process, right? So here's just a quick screenshot of um, the more button uh, within PO20. Uh, uh, and here's where it defaulted to yes, because we had that IC12 set up. Um, but just have it be known that if you have a special product or this one-time inspection, you actually can set this to uh, inspection yes on the, the PO20 uh, line. So that can be really helpful. Okay, so once you have uh, a PO to receive where an item is required for inspection, um, it's gonna, once you add the receiver, it's gonna bring you right to PO39 to enter the quantity and the lot, uh, the lot number, if you're doing sublots, um, any kind of expiration dates you might wanna include in there, you're gonna include this on the PO39 screen. And then once you add that on PO39, it's gonna bring you back to PO30 to release your receiver. 
So if that item is re also requires inspection, you're gonna and you do a drill on that item in IC12, you're gonna see uh, that inspection hold line has new quantities added there. So those items are kind of uh, frozen there until someone goes in to re uh, inspect and re uh, approve or reject that um, that inspection, and that's done on PO34. But for the inspectors in, in a lab or another department of the hospital, how do they know that they have something to approve or reject? And this is where you can get kind of creative with that notification and messaging. Yeah, so here's where we talk about these IPA flows, right? So Infor um, does offer some canned uh, IPA flows. So there's two that are available to you right out of the, the box, uh, and that's inspection required and inspection item rejected. So these are very, very basic, but they are helpful um, because they just notify someone, right? And in this instance, both of these flows are notifying the buyer. The buyer. Um, so, um, you probably want to build on this a little bit more, right? So this is the very basic uh, notification that's sent out from um, the inspection IPA flow. Um, so there's a lot missing, right? <laughs> it leaves a little bit to be desired. And it only goes, this um, defaults to the buyer. So the buyer would then have to go and notify the inspector. Um, so again, there's some customization here that is definitely, they, you know, some low hanging fruit where you could add this to make this a valuable piece of information. So we really recommend uh, bringing it to the next level, right? Um, there's so much you can do with this. Um, rethink who needs to get notified um, and what type of information do they need? So, um, you know, Infor built this that the, the buyer is controlling this process. Um, the receiver doesn't necessarily even know that in, uh, inspection was kicked off, right? Because they release this receipt and then it just goes off and, and sequesters those items in that um, inspection hold. Uh, so the buyer would then need to get involved and what if they're not even in that receiving area, right? So uh, maybe notifying the receiver along with whoever the inspector is um, for that particular receipt. Um, and how would you know what type of, um, who the inspector is for that particular location, right? So maybe building a, a location attribute um, so there's a, a particular person that's responsible for any kind of inspection. Uh, and then maybe as part of that notification, you're adding in things like the uh, lot and expiration or maybe some set instructions on um, you know, sequestering that that lot to a specific area and bringing one of those items um, to that location, right? right. You also leverage the in-basket too. Yes. Right? So you could have, you could approve or reject that, that uh, inspection right from the email itself, the notif or your in-basket. Um, so there's ways to streamline that without having to actually go into PO34 to approve or reject. Exactly. So keeping it all in the system uh, is really valuable, right? Um, the buyer, yes, could be the one to uh, approve or reject that re um, that inspection through, you know, email notification. But none of that's tracked. So I think it's really valuable to um, have the inspector be a part of the process in Lawson. But someone's probably not, you know, familiar with even uh, PO34. They're not a Lawson user. So the in-basket option is uh, a really great one. Um, and then we also had an idea. Um, um, about, um, there was another idea that we had with the um, pre-populating of um, lot and expirations. I'm trying to remember what it was and now I forget. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's really the solution that we, we talked through. Um, there's really a, a lot that you can do with the process by keeping it in the system and, and leveraging um, IPA flows. Um, out of the box, what M4 offers is, um, helpful to get you started, um, but there's, there's a lot that you can uh, grow from that. Any questions? It does look like we have at least one. Excellent. Can I fix 
think my uh, thing isn't working anymore to get to the next slide. There. Sorry, just one second here, just getting the question. Um, the question is, do your sessions count towards uh, continuing education credits? Not presently, but we are evaluating that. Not presently, but we are evaluating that. Excellent. Uh, we do have an IPA symposium uh, coming uh, Wednesday, September 20th. It's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, so this would be a really great um, place to talk to your peers about making this happen. Um, I think it's a, a pretty simplistic uh, flow. Um, it's just really the process behind it um, to make sure that your departments are on board um, and that you're, um, you're properly um, transacting through the system and not, you know, causing any, um, you know, uh, downstream effects by turning this inspection process on and not communicating properly to your receivers. So then you have all these quantities and ins inspection hold. All right, great. Does it look like we have any more questions? I want to thank uh, Mr. Dan Ferrugio, Ms. Stephanie Powell for, uh, keep one more question. All right. <laughs> I love it. Let's see what it is here. I mean, we were so quick, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is there any way to track items that are not inventory tracked? We want to record serial numbers on receipts of OR items that are not inventory tracked. Absolutely. Um, can you click back on the presentation so it will go back? Um, so the product does not need to be uh, inventory tracked, but in order to require the inspection, you need to have IC12 record. So if you're an organization that has um, non-stock products but don't build that IC12, you'll need that in order to inspect them. Um, but as far as lot and expiration, uh, you just turn that on at the, um, the IC11 or IC12 screen, uh, and then it will require uh, you to enter that lot information in. And that also works with MSCM too. So if you're receiving on the handhelds and you do a PO receipt, it's going to prompt you on the handheld to enter a, uh, a lot number as well. Yep, so you can certainly do this for your OR products. Um, just have to be mindful, uh, you know, uh, what your receiving area looks like and at what point um, is it going to be requiring this receipt. Like if you have a, a loading dock area where they're starting the process or a distribution area, you wouldn't necessarily want them opening these boxes and finding out all these lot numbers of all these individual products, right? So that may need to um, have a different location even if you have um, a main distribution area. They don't start the receipt, they move that to you and then you go through it. So I have a follow-up, and I think I've run across this in the past. But when entering R for lot number on IC12, it states the item must be inventory tracked. Hmm. So I think that's the that's the, the flip there. And um, we did not run into that issue, so okay. I don't know if it was maybe our sandbox or it, sometimes those things get updated, that, right? Yeah. Huh. Does the inspection flag work for items we would want? biomed to inspect prior to delivery to a department? So that would be a part of your process. Um, the inspection process wouldn't necessarily stop that. All it is is, is um, creating um, a separate like kind of inspection record as part of the receipt, but it does allow the release of the receipt. So it'd have to be a, a process with the your receipt. The inspection is rejected, it also creates the return too, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah. Yeah, so it'd be, uh, you know, something that you would need to train the staff on um, so that they're not moving that product to an area um, yet. 